Namo Buddhaya and welcome to this channel. I welcome you. This is Sabina. Uh, in this video, I am taking up my learnings from the Middle Discourses 87. Uh, it is the title of the discourse is uh, Born from the Beloved. It is also known as Tiyajatika Sutta. Tiyajatika Sutta. Link to the, the uh, uh, full discourse is given in the description. You can read it at your end also. Okay, so uh, interesting discourse this one is where uh, this is all discussion about the loved ones, whether they are a source of happiness or whether they are a source of suffering. Right, so let's see what Buddha says. Uh, so Buddha was staying in Savatthi in Jetta's grove and uh, at that time a certain householder's dear and beloved child passed away and uh, after that their death. So like, you know, the kind of attachment that we have with our loved ones. So after that, um, death that their death that uh, householder didn't feel like working or eating he would go to the cemetery and wail where are you my only child where are you my only child and then he went to the buddha he bowed and sat down on one side uh, the buddha said to him householder you look like someone who, who's not in their right mind your faculties have deteriorated so that person asked sir how my faculties have got uh, deteriorated for my dear and beloved child has passed away. Since their death, I haven't felt like working or eating. I go to the cemetery, cemetery and wail, where is my child, where is my child? So Buddha said, that's true, householder. That's so true. Buddha knew about how, how mind works, how our various feelings and emotions work. So Buddha said, for our loved ones are a source of sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress. Now this is a, like, like, now this is a householder who is wailing because of his death of his child and Buddha is giving him a very direct kind of a statement. Uh, uh, again, Buddha is not a pessimistic, Buddha is not a optimistic, Buddha is a realist. He says what there is. So he says, Buddha says, our loved ones are a source of sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress. Now that householder who was under that influence of grief and everything, he said, sir, how on earth could one could ever think of such a thing? For our loved ones are a source of joy and happiness. So disagreeing with the Buddha's statement, rejecting it, he got up from his seat and left. Right? So he did not agree with what Buddha said. He said the loved ones are a source of joy and happiness. Now at that time several gamblers were there so uh, who were playing dice not far from the Buddha. The householder approached them and they said that that's true householder. Uh, our loved ones are a source of joy and happiness. So then he said that uh, the, the householder thought that uh, the gamblers are right, Buddha, are, Buddha is wrong, and he left from there, right? Then what happened is, this, this kind of conversation went up to King Pasanadi. Pasanadi, who, who had taken her Kosa, Kosala, where Buddha was living at that time. So he addressed Queen Malika. Now, Queen Malika was a lay disciple of the Buddha, and she was very much into Buddha's teachings, and she was very much kind of having a faithful devotion to the Buddha, Buddha's teachings. So King Pas uh, Pasanadi was not yet, he was not yet a kind of a follower of the Buddha, so uh, he asked, addressed Queen Malika, Malika, your ascetic Gautama says that your, our loved ones are a source of sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress. Is, is that what the Buddha said? Great. So then Malika said, if that, is that what the Buddha said? Uh, uh, she said that basically if Buddha is saying something, it is, must be true. There must be a merit in what he is saying. So King Pasanadi, since he was not very much into Buddha's teaching, he said, you are just a student who agrees with everything your master, everything your teachers say. Okay. Then Queen Malika, what she did, she addressed the Brahmin Nalinjana, that Brahmin go to the Buddha and in my name ask whether he has said such a thing. So he went up to the Buddha and said, sir, have you said such a thing that our loved ones are the source of suffering? So, uh, so Buddha said yes. And then Buddha gave a certain few ways how to understand this. Buddha said, once upon a time, right here in Savatthi, a woman's mother passed away. Because of that, she went mad and lost her mind. She went from street to street and from square to square, saying, Has anyone seen my mother? Has anyone seen my mother? Then Buddha gave another analogy. A certain woman's father, brother, sister, son, daughter, husband passed away. Because of that, she went mad. Right? Similarly, a certain man's mother, father, brother, sister, they passed away and he went mad and lost his mind. Right? This is another way to understand how our loved ones are a source of sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness. Then uh, there's another thing Buddha is saying that uh, another example he is giving that a 
Once a time right here in Savathi, a certain woman went to live with her relative's family, but her relatives wanted to divorce her from her husband and give her to another who she didn't want. So she told her husband about this. But he cut her in two and disemboweled himself, thinking we shall be together after that. That means he took a very rash and impulsive decision. He murdered her and he also committed suicide, thinking that together he, she, he and her wife, they will... Uh, live together after death. That's another way to understand how our loved ones are a source of sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness, suffering. So then Nilanjana, uh, uh, the Brahmin, went up to Queen Malika and told her of what uh, he had discussed with the Buddha. So then Queen Malika approached King Pasanadi and asked, uh, do you love Princess Vajiri? Vajiri is the daughter of uh, uh, King Pasanadi and Malika. So King said, yes, definitely I do. So what do you think, great king, if she were to decay and perish, would sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness, distress arise in you? King said, yes, definitely, my life will fall apart. So, so Malika said, this is what Buddha was referring to when he said, our loved ones are a source of sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress. Then he, she discussed about some other like Lady Vasabha, uh, General Vid, Vidudabha, all the children, sons and daughters. Then she asked, do you love me? She said, yes, if I were to decay and perish, then what? So he said, my life will fall apart. Right? So all these things she asked. And then she said, this is why our, uh, our master says. Right? So then when once King Pasanadi got this kind of a thing in his personal life, that if my loved one, something happens to them, if I will fall, my life will fall apart. Then he understood. He said, it's incredible, Malika. It's amazing how far the Buddha sees with penetrative wisdom. And then he got arranged his robe and raised his joint palms towards the Buddha and expressed this heartfelt sentiment three times. Homage to that blessed one, the perfected one, the fully awakened Buddha. And he said this three times. So he understood and uh, Buddha's view and why Buddha said that and he uh, said homage to the Buddha, the fully awakened one. Right. So friends, it's a very important discourse. Um, see, if you f understand... Uh, you know, when you talk about attachments, there are many attachments. We have attachments to our job, our money, our power, lot of things, pleasures in life. But the strongest attachment that you have is uh, the love with our family members. And they, that love actually is the becomes the source of sorrow. And that is why uh, in the Buddha's teachings, the person who is like really, really focused on his awareness, at one time, he arranges his affairs and he leaves his lay life into homelessness because that attachment he has to get over. That's why Buddha also went went over. He had this question, you know, how to come out of suffering. But now all of us, we cannot, you know, despite our strongest intentions to attain Nibbana, we cannot live our lay life. We have responsibilities. And Buddha never ever educated her to a poor person to go over from lay life to homelessness. He respected the institution of marriage and he had established rules for the lay people. But when in a lay life also, what we can do is that, see, living in family settings, living with our children, everything, and having full affection for them, we need to keep into our mindfulness, a guard of mindfulness up. That means we do not need to lose ourselves. There is lose ourselves in our affection, lose ourselves in attachment to our loved one. See, there is a difference between having affection for our loved ones and family members, taking care of them, taking care of their well-being and losing the ourselves in our attachment to their uh, them right because the when we do when we attach with them when we then what happens is possessiveness tendencies come right demanding tendencies come he should do the way that i want because i know what is good for her or what is good for him we have this thing i have this thing for my daughter you know these things come that she should choose this occupation or this vocation she should study in this field because I know that it is better for, for her. So these kind of tendencies, they start creeping in and they become a source of sorrow because this craving to my idea that my daughter should choose this subject or that subject, right? And when she doesn't do that and I suppose I see her suffering that she is not, she is not living the life which I should have, th I thought she should be living which would not entail suffering for her. That causes my own suffering, that binds me. Right? So let family members live their life, give love, affection, but don't get attached. So be 
I'm not saying don't get attached. Be mindfulness of your attachment that comes with your love. Right. So uh, I hope this was useful. Uh, uh, this discourse was useful for you. And do share your thoughts, your insights in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya.